Live from Charlotte, this is WBTV News on your side. The final hours of the election coming into focus. I pulled in about 10 till 6. So that way, no matter what happens in the near future, I had a say in it. We're on your side with a closer look at some of the key issues driving voters to the polls in record numbers. Job market, climate change, uh, health care is a big one. And why this election night could stretch on. Depending on which way this goes, I mean, this uh, country could take a 180. Plus, some cities preparing for the outcome of the election with plywood. We have to protect ourselves, not only financially, but physically, because people are going to be upset either way. We're on your side on this historic election day. Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. Good evening. Thanks for joining us right here at 530. It is election night. I'm Maureen O'Boyle and I'm Jamie Bull. In just two hours, polls will close in North Carolina. In South Carolina, they'll close a half hour earlier at seven o'clock. As you can see, despite record breaking turnout during early voting, thousands still lined up today to cast their ballots in person. Our crews were there with you all day because although leading up to this vote, it may have seemed the election was all about the candidates but it is really about the issues that matter to you. No question about it. We have team coverage across the area at several of these polling locations across our area, Charlotte and Mecklenburg County, as well as Gaston and Union counties, just to name a few. And that's where we'll be taking you during this half hour. Let's start off in Union County. They saw a huge turnout for early voting there. Elections officials say it could be a reason why turnout on election day itself has been pretty low. That's where our Paige Peroso is live right now. So Paige, people are out of work. I'm looking for a line. I don't see one behind you. Yeah, they've been nearly non-existent all day. The lines have looked a lot like this one, which is no one in it. I'm here at the Mineral Springs Volunteer Fire Department polling station. It is the largest precinct in Union County, and I've been told by election officials that there's only been a few hundred people who have showed up to vote today. They say partially because they've seen such record breaking voter turnout for early voting across the county. Now that's the case for many precincts, including this one in Union County. The Union County Board of Elections says their voter turnout was again record breaking more than 109,000 voters participated in early voting. Now compare that to 2016. The total ballots for that entire election was a little over 106,000 votes. Although there aren't many lines, there is a lot of passionate voters on both sides of this election election showing up to the polls. They're encouraging everybody to get out and vote. Polls don't close until 730, so there's still plenty of time. I would say get up off of the couch, number one, because that's probably what they're doing, <laughs> and get out and vote. That's what we're supposed to do since the very beginning of the United States. So I just think that's our responsibility. I've been telling all my friends, like, I don't care who you vote for, but it's really important to make sure you're heard. Now looking at the numbers for Union County as a whole, election officials say 65% of registered voters voted during that early voting period. Now Union County Board of Election officials say they really encouraged that this year by opening more early voting locations and also extending some of the hours. They say because of that and because of those numbers really early in the voting period, they say they think they're going to have their results on the earlier side of things tonight. Of course, we're going to have that covered and monitored for you right here on WBTV. For now, Reporting live in Union County, I'm Paige Peroso, WBTV on your side. You're all eagerly awaiting those results. Paige, thank you. More election coverage in moments, but first some breaking news we're following right now. Live pictures here from Sky 3. This is in Gastonia where a train has crashed into a car. You can see the car has now been put on the back of that flatbed truck. This is US 321 near Neil Hawkins Road. Again, that tow truck is moving that car away. The train still stopped on the tracks. Crews say no one seriously hurt. We're working to figure out what that car was doing on the tracks when the train was coming. So we'll keep you updated on this breaking news in Gastonia tonight. Maureen. Back to our election day coverage in Gaston County. A similar story to what you saw in Union County. Many voters opted for early voting, which is keeping lines there in Gaston County pretty short. Our Ron Lee is live right now in Belmont with the story. So any crowds out there, Ron? 
Uh, Maureen, the simple answer to that is no. This polling place is very quiet right now, and it's actually been quiet all day long, which historically, when you think about it, it's kind of strange not to see these massive lines out in front of the polling places on Election Day. But I talked to the polling director, and he tells me that this new system is, he is so impressed with it that this may actually end up being the future of the way folks get out and vote. Now, when the workers got in this morning, early this morning, as a matter of fact, they were expecting the long lines, but that simply didn't happen. It's been steady but slow all day long. In fact, they've only counted about four to 500 ballots here today. Workers say in all, that's thanks to early voting. Out of 4,500 who uh, usually stand in long lines, 73% elected to get the voting out of the way early. The precinct director says the turnout, despite what it looks like, is absolutely tremendous, with 83% of registered voters getting to cast a ballot one way or another. It's just been slow and steady, and uh, times when there have been three people in there. For a large precinct, that's incredible. Now, there's still about 800 ballots that uh, they would like to get in. Folks have not shown up for that yet. That would get them all the way up to 100%, but historically they said that's probably not going to happen. But we still have a little bit of time if you're in the area and if this is your precinct to come out here and vote. There are no lines at all. In Belmont, I'm Ron Lee, WBTV on your side. Open until 7.30. Ron, thank you. Our team coverage continues in Mecklenburg County. WBTV's Chandler Morgan is talking to voters about why this election matters to them and what issues are fueling their decisions at the polls. It's very emotional. Janisha Gardner is just one of the dozens of voters who's casting her ballot at East Mecklenburg High School. Honestly, we have to do something. Gardner is hoping a lot of people make their voice heard on Election Day. Lyft driver Simone Swain says she's trying to help make that happen. It's been a busy morning so far. Swain says there's been a high demand for pickups and drop offs at polling sites across Mecklenburg County because the rides have been coming coming in. But once it's time to make your selections ballot in hand, Gardner says jobs and employment weigh heavy on her mind for her decisions. I have a lot of friends that don't have jobs. I actually have friends that don't have homes now. She says that's because of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's another key factor for Gardner on which candidates she'll choose. Those are issues on voters' minds here too at Greater Galilee Baptist Church in South End. The pandemic definitely is playing a role in this as well. Voter Trip Price says that meant doing his due diligence and researching the candidates that best align with his values. Values. Job market, climate change, uh, health care is a big one. Hopefully America will make changes, so I have to do it for my city because this is where I live. Reporting in South End, Chandler Morgan, WETV on your side. And don't forget the Charlotte area transit system and some ride share companies are making sure you have a ride to the polls tonight. Cats is offering a free ride. Face masks are encouraged and social distancing protocols must be followed. Bus loads will be capped at 20 passengers. Uber and Lyft will also be providing free or discounted rides as well. Well, we're all waiting for the results to come in later tonight, but unlike years past, we may not know who wins the presidential election tonight. It's important to remember some counting always goes on past Election Day. Now, we often know the winner on election night because of projections made by using a combination of voting data and exit polls. Because of the pandemic this year, more people have voted absentee, so it might take a little longer to get the data needed to make those projections. Now that won't be the case likely here in North Carolina. The majority of those eligible to vote have already done so either by mail or during the early in person voting period. So within an hour of the polls closing, we should start to have those totals and we should really have a good idea of the results from in person voting by our 11 p.m. newscast. Now in South Carolina, many more votes will come in on Election Day. As for absentee ballots, the processing of those ballots really just got started yesterday, some on Sunday. The State Board of Elections, though, says it does hope to have final numbers for us tonight. But the Carolinas alone won't tell us who won the presidency. We need to see how the other battleground states shake out, and counting methods are different from place to place. Florida and Arizona results, those should come in tonight. Texas as well. Wisconsin hopes to have a result in the early hours of Wednesday. Georgia, we understand, might take a day or two. And then there's Pennsylvania and Michigan. Officials in both of those states say we may have to wait until Friday to get a full picture in those swing states. And one more thing, nothing is final 
final until states canvass the results, which is usually wrapping up right around Thanksgiving. Maureen. Jamie, it was certainly a nice day to go out and vote, although chilly, not a cloud in the sky as we look through our HD tower cam. Let's find out if this chilly weather is sticking around with meteorologist Lee Brock. Lee, how cold will we get tonight? Well, it will get cool tonight. We're going to head down to the 30s, but not quite as cold as it was last night when we hit 31 degrees for a low. Let me show you this. The sun is officially down now. Lansdowne Elementary School camera from our Scott Clark Toyota network of cameras. That means it's going to get pretty cool pretty quickly. If you're still heading out to vote, you can certainly still do that, but maybe take a jacket. Your 7 p.m. temperature, that'll be around 52 degrees. So as I said, once the sun is down, we have low humidity, so the temperatures drop quickly. By 9 o'clock, will be around 49 and 47 will be your 11 o'clock temperature this evening. Here's where we stand right now. 57 degrees is your temperature in Statesville, 58 in Rock Hill, 55 in Lancaster, and 56 is your temperature in Rockingham for now. So here's what it looks like as you head into the next six hours. We'll show you this one more time. Partly cloudy skies by 6 p.m. We're going to be in the mid 40s. That's by 12 o'clock. So by first thing tomorrow morning, we make it to the upper 30s. Thankfully, not the low 30s like this morning. So hopefully many of you don't have that frost to scrape off the windshield. But we do have a warm up in store. We're actually going to be heading for the 70s before you know it and probably staying there for a while. In fact, we could have tropical rains before you know it heading into next week due to the remnants of Ada. So we have all of that coming up in just a little bit. For now, we'll send things back to you. Lee, thank you. Americans across the country are heading to the polls in record numbers, long lines and pandemic protocols. We're checking in on how Election Day is shaping up across the country. Plus problems at the polls a little closer to home. Viewers contacted us. Our investigative reporter, Didi Gatton, is checking up on their concerns. Closed captioning on Dennis. More than 100 million Americans cast their ballots early this election year. Despite that, lines are long at some polling locations across the country. So far, the process has been peaceful, but there have been isolated problems reported. CBS's Danya Bacchus has the latest from Los Angeles. Voters lined up before the sun came up this morning, ready to cast their ballot. Pretty important. That's why I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning and uh, got out here by 4.30. Some waited in line for hours. I'm prepared to wait as long as it takes. Polling locations are operating with special COVID-19 protocols in place. You can see the hand sanitizer out. They had a system for the pens and uh, they had, I mean, it was very, I mean, they had everything just worked out really well. Here in Los Angeles County, election officials say with the record number of early voting, they're able to begin preparing and sorting ballots. With just hours now until some polls close, some voting venues like in Florida, Georgia, Ohio, and Nevada are reporting some technical issues. These Oklahoma City voters cast their ballots in the dark because of a power outage after a recent storm. And some voters in Marion County, Indiana, were locked out of their polling place. Officials in several swing states, including Michigan, Pennsylvania, Florida, and Iowa, reported some voters received automated calls, warning them to stay away from the polls today and vote tomorrow. Homeland Security officials say so far there is no evidence to suggest foreign adversaries have compromised any U.S. voting systems. We're not out of the woods yet, though. Today, in some sense, is halftime. Still, people are on edge. Several cities have boarded up in anticipation of violence following the election's outcome. There are at least 5,800 National Guard troops on duty in 13 states for election support and in case there is civil unrest. Donya back is CBS News, Los Angeles. Our team coverage continues now. Our crews are spread out across the WBTV viewing area tonight. There were some polling problems in some counties. Our Dee Dee Gatton joins us now live. And Dee Dee, you've been looking into some of those problems. Explain what happened today. Maureen, surprisingly, for an election day, things have been running pretty smoothly. We did run into some problems earlier today at Myers Park Traditional Elementary School. Now, take a look at this video. There have been reports that Republican signs here and in several locations have been taken. I spoke to Sarah Reedy Jones, the NCGOP vice chairman, about the problems that she's been seeing. 
it's been ongoing throughout the campaign. We've had uh, Trump signs being stolen as soon as they're put in the ground. We actually had somebody putting out Trump, uh, all of our signs on uh, early voting site, and somebody actually walked up and picked up the signs in front of that volunteer. Uh, they said, please stop, and the person didn't care. She went ahead and just picked up the signs and put them in her car and drove off. But that's been happening uh, everywhere, and since we've been putting signs in the ground, they've been taken up. Uh, Didi, any other issues reported besides those signs being taken up? Maureen, there have been a few different kinds of polling problems that have been reported to WBTV. Take a look at your screen at this list right here. The NC House race was not included in several ballots in Cabarrus County. A Union County voter alleges his vote was not counted. And polling at four sites statewide didn't open on time, as we reported earlier today. We'll have much more coverage coming up later in the show. For now, live in Mooresville, I'm Dee Dee Gatton reporting for WBTV on your side. Dee Dee, we will see you later. If you were in line to vote early today, you probably felt the chill. Let's check in with meteorologist Lee Brock to find out what the rest of the week is looking like. A warm up, Lee? Yeah, it is going to get warmer. In fact, we're heading for the 70s, which is above average for this time of year. As of right now, though, the sun is officially down and it's 62 here in Charlotte, 54 in Salisbury, 60 in Monroe, and 52 is your temperature in Chester as you're stepping out this evening. So let's take a look at this. We have our temperatures that are really mild, or they have been mild this afternoon, but of course, now that the sun is down, you can see that's the case from your Scott Clark Nissan Honda HD Tower Cam. Temperatures are going to be falling very quickly, mainly because of this. Look at that dew point of 28 degrees so it is very dry that allows those temperatures to drop pretty quickly so before you know it, we're going to be in the 50s and then the 40s a little bit later on great big high pressure system in place it's right over top of the southeast that's why so many people have the clear skies the dry conditions no problems getting to the poles today at least as far as the weather is concerned can't blame that because we've had sunny skies just about everywhere just really good looking day out there let's take a look at our precipitation chances though we see that staying really low through wednesday through Thursday. In fact, we're talking about a 0% chance of rain the next two days. Only goes up to 10% for Friday and Saturday. Sunday, maybe a 20% chance, but then heading into next week, there are a lot of questions there. The remnants of Ada could be paying us a visit as we head into the week next week. But here's the thing. We can't necessarily put a first alert on any one day because one model is taking Ada's rain, or at least parts of the rain, close to us by Monday, Tuesday, even lasting into Wednesday. There's another model that. There we go. <laughs> There's a, the, uh, one model is taking in rain Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Another model is taking in Wednesday and Thursday. So we'll certainly let you know when we have a little bit more information. But next week, we are looking at rain potentially coming this way. So let's take a look at Hurricane Ada right now. 140 mile per hour winds, a category four storm moving to the west at about five miles an hour. It moved on shore, made landfall in Nicaragua, causing lots of damage to a place that just can't handle it. Heading into Honduras from there and then weakening as it heads back out into the Caribbean. After that, it moves closer to Cuba, but by Saturday, it could be back to 45 mile per hour winds. So not hurricane status, but strengthening a little bit. So that's why we'll be watching this as we head into the week ahead to see if we have any rain from it. So here's your forecast. 69 degrees. That's your Wednesday high 71 on Thursday, 73 on Friday. Heading into the weekend, still pretty low rain chances, but we're back in the 70s through the rest of the weekend. The weekend heading into the week ahead, we'll leave in as of right now, a 30% chance of rain on Monday, 40% chance on Tuesday. That that is though expected to change or potentially change as we fine tune that track of Ada. There's your forecast. Eric Thomas has more at six o'clock. He'll be back. We know we'll be watching it closely. Thank you, Lee. Coming up next, some good news to brighten your day. Brewers craft a special beer to help with wildfire aid. Plus all new at six o'clock. As voters head out here to West Charlotte, we're hearing from the young and the old, and there has been a party, free food, giveaways all happening here. I'll show you more coming up. In tonight's good news, a group of California breweries is using their craft to help victims of the Creek Fire, which is still burning. They're making a special beer with a special purpose. 100% of the proceeds from the beer will go toward fire relief. The beer, which is a Pilsner, is called the Fire Brigade. It's described as easy drinking yet 
crafty. The money will benefit volunteer fire departments. Nine breweries from the West Coast are all pitching in resources to make it. The least we can do is kind of give back and try to help those. You got to do something, bring a little hope. The Creek Fire has burned since September. Nearly 400,000 acres charred with restaurants closed. Beer sales are down, but the brewers say they still felt compelled to do what they could to help. Our coverage of campaign 2020 continues next at 6 o'clock coming up.